Hey, my name is Marcus and welcome to this tutorial. If you're gonna follow along, you're gonna learn how to create this beautiful slice of three-dimensional landscape with GLS 3. So we're gonna create this three-dimensional setup. We're gonna have a look at the camera rig, we're gonna draw features to our texture and we're gonna add labels to this three-dimensional landscape. Alright, so let's create that piece of landscape. Um, I'm going to use the create, create 3D landscape function of GLayers, therefore. Um, we've got a bunch of settings here. Everything's good, but I would like to name it Phantom Ranch. And the texture size by default is um, 2048, but we only need this to be um, 1024 because we only want to display like a slice of this landscape. Underneath here, we got three options for three supported um, plugins that would render the displaced landscape. And you could do it with Freeform Pro, Plexus, but I'm gonna use Trap Code Mirror here. And by clicking the button, GLayers is gonna create a 3D landscape setup. Now, um, we got this set up here and what this actually is about, it is three map comps. It is a controller map comp, which sits um, right in our uh, composition right here. It is a texture map comp, which simply renders the texture for a trap coat mirror. And there is also a height map comp, which looks like this. And this is pretty much uh, the displacement for a trap coat mirror. Okay, so I don't wanna dive too deep into detail on this setup. I'm gonna just show you how to control it. So you would want to select the controller layer because this is in the comp where our mirror plugin renders the 3D landscape. Everything else you don't really need to care about. I'm gonna show you this. Now, the first thing we wanna do with our 3D landscape is change its location. So I'm gonna type in Grand Canyon here and I'm gonna choose the first search result here. Boom, everything's black. Now what's going on here? Uh, the reason that this is black is because our 3D landscape is displaced beyond our camera. So what we can do first is we're gonna select the layer where our trap coat mirror is placed on. And there's also this elevation slider. And by dragging this to zero, we can simply see what happens. So as I increase this value, everything is displaced. This happens a lot of times when you're zoomed in a lot. So let's first create the view that we really want. So I'm gonna zoom out here a bunch of times, probably a bit more like that. So this is the view I want, and I'm gonna select the mirror layer again and crank up the elevation a bit, probably about 80. That looks pretty good. Now, this setup has also a little camera rig here, so which is those layers plus the camera here. So we want to adjust the camera elevation to the displacement of our trap coat mirror layer. Therefore, I just hit P and change the Z position of this layer. Next thing, I'm going to change the bearing a bit. So I'm going to hit R to show the rotation properties here, and I'm going to use the Z rotation to change our bearing. The pitch would be the same thing on this layer, so I could change the X rotation here, but um, I'm actually pretty good with this. Now that we have our location in place, I'm gonna hit finalize to finalize the three map comps. So it is downloading the texture in the right resolution and the height map. Now I would love to have this river in a blue color. This is pretty easy and fast, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna click download features here. I'm gonna use the current view features. Like this, we get all the features of our current view. And in this water feature collection, I can see the lake. So I'm gonna simply select a blue style here and hit draw features. Now, normally Geo Layers would have drawn this to the controller map camp, which sits in here but it hasn't done so. It has drawn it to our texture, which is cool. But let me explain you why this happens. 
I have used the setting draw on preferred map comp here. And if this is checked, you can define one map comp in a group of linked map comps that it should be preferred for drawing. And if I unlock the settings here, we can simply see this. So I can set one of these map comps to be the one that is preferred for drawing. And no matter which map comp of this link group is selected, GLIS will always draw on this one. You can do the same thing with template labels. So no matter which one is selected, GLIS will always put the label on the controller map comp. We're going to do this in a minute. First, let me change the blending mode to multiply here, that we can see like some texture through. Cool, now our river is nice and blue. What I'm going to do else is I would love to label Phantom Ranch here. So I'm going to select the feature here, I'm going to select my label template, and I'm going to hit add label here. I'm going to jump a bit ahead in time that we can actually see the label. And you can see that there's some sort of an offset, so Phantom Ranch should appear pretty much there. This is simply because our landscape is displaced. You can see it when I like change the pitch here. And there's a pretty good trick to get it like in the right spot. We're gonna draw Phantom Ranch to our texture layer. And like this, we have the geographical position where the label should sit. And now we can simply adjust the label's height to match this point. Now let's create this sliced look. So what we want to do first is we want to create a black border on our height map that the border is always displaced at zero. So we can do this by simply double clicking the rectangle tool here. And I'm going to change the stroke to a solid color here. And this needs to be black. We have this black border on our height map here. And what this does is it simply displaces the border to zero here. Now this doesn't look good with our texture. So we're going to do the same thing on our texture. I'm going to double click the rectangle tool here. Now I'm going to change the stroke to a gradient stroke. I'm going to use 40 pixels here. Let's adjust the colors first. So I'm going to pick a very dark brown here and a lighter one. And then I'm going to change the end point to 1 and 1. And like this, we pretty much have this color split in our um, border here. So this looks pretty great on our displaced map here. Okay, we're going to do a bunch of more things to make this look even more interesting. So I'm going to go inside my texture map map comp here. I'm going to create a solid, make it 500 by 500 pixels, and put the radio waves effect on top. I'm going to change the expansion to 1 and the lifespan to 5 seconds, start width to 2, the end width to 0, and the color should be white. Now we have those radio waves here, and I would like to pin those to the geographical position of Phantom Ranch. We can do this by selecting our layer. Then we need to select the map comp that we want to pin it to. So this is the texture map comp. And with the feature Phantom Ranch selected, I can say pin layer to feature. And by clicking this, GeoLayers will pin it to the exact geographical position of this feature here. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to create a comp sized solid here and use the grid effect. Set the width to one pixels and drag this below our border here. Now this looks pretty interesting. I would like to have some more of this grid here. So this could be in the background. So I'm going to create a solid, make it 3000 by 3000 pixels. Make it a 3D layer actually. And again, I'm dragging the grid effect on top, changing the size, so the border size to one pixel. So the anchor is 1,500. So I'm setting the corner to 1,600. So our rectangles will be 100 pixels, like this. 
and I'm dragging this one below our mirror layer. And that's exactly what I want. Now let's create a background. So I'm going to make a comp size solid. I'm going to call this BG here. And I'm using a gradient ramp. I'm changing this one to radial. I'm going to adjust the position here, swap those colors and let this appear in blue. Now I like the look of this. Let's add some camera movement here. So this should be very subtle. So I'm going to reveal the rotation properties here, tapping R. And I'm going to add a keyframe to the X rotation of our pitch layer and the Z rotation of our bearing layer. Then I jump a bit ahead in time and I'm going to change those values. I'm going to trim my work area here. Now to make this appear a bit more like this um, in this miniature style, we're going to use some depth of field. So I'm going to go to the camera options. I'm going to switch on depth of field here and I'm going to increase the aperture. That's a bit too much, I guess. So I'm going to put it to 600 pixels here. And I really like it how things are getting blurry here. Now let's go ahead with the last step. I'm going to take the Phantom Ranch Comp, pre-compose it, call this one Render. I'm going to use the Lumetri color effect to do some color grading here. I'm going to simply select the look and add a vignette to it. Now this is how you create those very interesting slice of landscape animation. We also learn how to use the preferred map comps for drawing and for labeling. And we also learn how to pin layer to feature function. I hope you liked the tutorial. Have a great day. Bye.